Today, November 12, 2023, we are studying lesson 11, the world system, the world system. And uh, let us pray before we read the passage. Father, help me to play my role to ensure that only the righteous are in authority. Father, help me to play my role to ensure that only the righteous are in authority in Jesus' name. Amen. Our passage is taken from 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, from verse 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes are the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. A Christian is a person who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior and is living a holy life with the ultimate goal of making to it to heaven. As you can see in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, according as in his divine power are given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us unto glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious that by this ye might partakers, ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. However, there are three terrible enemies. The first one is world system. The flesh, the devil, the world system, the flesh, and the devil, contending with the believer daily to make the Christian journey difficult and impossible. So a Christian should brace up to ensure that he walk in the Lord. And in according to Acts of Apostles, chapter 20, verses 29 to 30, in the study, we shall consider the enemy of the world system. For I know this, that after my departure, the departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples among them. In our first lesson outline, we are looking at Satan's world system. Satan's world system. The Bible uses word in three ways. First, it can refer to heads which God created. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Second, the world can revert to people, as in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
If you look at our memory fast for today, in 2 John 3, we are the believers, is one not to love the world or the things that are in the world. The world of the, in, the, in this passage refers to the operating system of the world, which is satanic. Since the fall of Adam and Eve, Satan has not changed his mode of operation. We can find this in Genesis 11 to 13, which says, Who told thee that thou wast naked? As thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said, Unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguided me, and I did it. So you can see that unstable in the aspect of the warning that God Almighty has given to them. He has been consistent at deceiving, manipulating, and dominating those who refuse to completely yield themselves to God. As you can find in Romans 6. 16, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself, servant, to obey his servant, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. He has, the devil has his own software designed to turn man against his maker and is still working in the world today. As you can find in Romans 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan world system comprises of money, Materialism, cultism, addictions, lust, selfishness, greed, and pride. And in accordance with 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a riding lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Also, Satan uses filthy and worldly music, adulterated television shows, reality shows, sexy movies, and indecent dressing to entice innocent souls by flooding their minds with wrong thoughts and getting them involved in unspeakable vices. He confuses people to rebel against the authorities, as we can find in June. Jude 8, likewise also these filthy dreamers divide the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. This is what Apostle John summarized in 1 John 2, 16. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. There is nothing good or godly in these things. And I pray that Almighty God will guide us and give us a new beginning in Jesus' name. And we are looking at second, second outline. We say God has a new world. God has a new world for you. He has a new world for me. Satan world system is God. It is God, Jesus, God's son, Jesus Christ. And it is God's people. Hence, the Bible clearly warns against friendship with, with the world. As you can find in James 4, 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Bible clearly against friendship. God will one day completely destroy Satan's work system. We can see this in 2 Peter 
chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away, and with a great noise, and the element shall melt with vivent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall burn up. So we can see that God has planned for humanity. And that's why he has given us that direction. The world has ruined by sin. But God has a new world for those who loved him. It is called the kingdom of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the king and the ruler of the world. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. When we surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, to be, and to be our Lord, God takes us out of Satan's kingdom and of darkness, and put us into the kingdom of his dear son. We are no longer Satan's world system. And as such, we will embrace God. And we embrace his divine plan for ourselves. As you can find in Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. Giving thanks unto the, the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. In conclusion, there is a way which seemed good or right unto man, but the hand thereof are the ways of death. We can find this in Proverbs 14, verse 12. Let's say the closing prayer. Father, I receive the grace to cling to you eternally. Father, I receive the grace to cling to you eternally. So help me, God, in Jesus' name. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what.
us to just lift up your hands and begin to bless the name of the Lord for what God is going to do in your life today. Begin to worship the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord because he's going to visit you with his blessings today. Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. 
And we are going to sing this song together to worship the Lord. Oh, be lifted above all of the gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you. Brethren, I don't know what you want the Lord to do for you today. I just want you to be expectant. Begin to tell the Lord what you want the Lord to do for you as you listen to our Father in the Lord. Father, touch me by your words. Father, bless me by your words. Father, heal me by your words. Begin to tell the Lord because your expectation shall not be cut short today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you will touch us by your words. You will visit us in the name of Jesus. I also want you to pray for our Father and the Lord that the Lord will be using for, for every one of us today. I want you to tell the Lord, Father, fill your son to the brim. As you have always been doing, touch him so that he can touch us. In the name of Jesus, shall we begin to pray? Pray for our Father and the Lord that the Lord will minister through him so that all of us can be blessed together. Father, Lord, we pray you will touch him so that he can touch us by his words. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, our Heavenly Father, we want to bless your name today. Thank you for another opportunity to be blessed by your words. Father, we know you are not tired of blessing us. And that is why we are excited to be in your presence today. Father, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we, lay, we commit our Father and the Lord unto you. As we be opening his mouth, O oh God, we pray you will fill it to the brim. You will touch him so that he can touch us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that through your words today, the sick shall be healed. In the name of Jesus. The poor shall be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray the afflicted shall be delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray none shall escape your blessings today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we promise that at the end of the day, we, we are not going to share your glory. Lord, we will return all the glory unto you. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for the great, great, great releases from heaven that God has been uh, giving to us from our Father in the Lord. May the Lord continually encourage and empower him in the name of Jesus. So the table is set for the word of God. The word of God gives guidance and direction. And so in the book of Psalm 119, verse 105, Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when you move forward, the Bible put light on your path. So when we walk forward, we get more light. And God has prepared our Father in the Lord to bring the word of God to us today. And I want you to get yourself ready because I know God will meet with you at the point of your need. I will ask Pastor Kule Ajayi to bring a father in the law, the general officer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, that he had able to the podium. God bless you as you listen to the word of God. <laughs> Ha ha ha. 
Let us pray. Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God. Immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art. King of kings and Lord of lords, the great I am, the one who had been before the mountains were brought forth, we worship you. We worship you because of the demonstration of your power in pulling down the wall of Jericho. Because you know the foundation of every mountain you know the foundation of every wall. Thank you that when your people praise you, you responded. We give you all glory and honor, and we say, Lord, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray one more time, Lord, that as your people will be praising you even more and more, you bring down every wall that the enemy may put in their path Amen. so that your name will be glorified forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let the people shout another hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, God bless you. You may shake hands with one or two of your friends and relatives and say, God, we bless you mightily. And then you may be seated. We are in part 29 of our series To Whom the Heavens Open. And we have been studying the story of Joshua all these 
months. And the book is so full of riches that we will still have quite a while to go. Today, we're looking at Joshua chapter 6, from verse 20 to 21. Joshua chapter 6, from verse 20 to 21. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men and women, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. In recent weeks, we've talked about the power of silence. And we have also talked about the power of a shout. We have mentioned the fact that because everything about God is massive, and therefore, when you shout to him, he expects the shout to be massive. We've discussed the fact that a huge shout, among other things, gets the attention of the one who is called the Almighty. So the people shouted with a great shout, and then the war fell down flat. What is next on our discussion is, what do you do when the war has fallen down flat? Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, Revelation 4, 11, tells us that God made everything for his pleasure. Everything that he created, he created it for his pleasure. Everything that he allows to happen is for his pleasure. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8, tells us also that God has a purpose for everything, everything, and he has a time also for everything. So when you combine these scriptures, the conclusion is when God opens a way, he has a purpose and he has a time. He has a pleasure in opening a way. He has a purpose for opening the way. And there is a timing connected. His pleasure, of course, is that once he opens a way, you move forward. The timing is that you move forward promptly. That is very important. As soon as the wall fell down flat, the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him, and they took the city. They did not waste time. In Exodus chapter 12, from verse 1 to 34, 
Exodus 12 from verse 1 to 34. When God overwhelmed Pharaoh on that great night when he was going to deliver Israel, Israel ate their meal standing, prepared to move. That's why one of the best ways of eating the Holy Communion is standing because something great is happening and you have to move promptly. When the children of Israel were delivered, they moved instantly. They moved quickly. Now, why would God expect you to move quickly when he has opened the way for you? It's because God, who knows the end from the beginning, knew that Pharaoh could change his mind. The one who said, go, go quickly, go and worship your God. Take everything you want to take and just go. It's the same one who in Exodus chapter 14 from verse 5 to 9, Exodus 14, 5 to 9, is the same one who said, what? We let Israel go? Let's go and get them back. When God opens a door for you, move, move forward. Move forward quickly. In Exodus chapter 14, from verse 30 to 28, Exodus 14, 30 to 28, when God opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel, they moved quickly. If any of them had hesitated, uh, what's going on? Away in the Red Sea, uh, I, 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 I am not quite sure I want to go in. The Egyptian would have caught up with that fellow. That fellow. And God knew that the enemy is going to follow. Move quickly as soon as God opens a way for you. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 42 to 51, 4 Samuel 17, from verse 42 to 51, the Bible tells us that David ran to battle. And as soon as Goliath hit the ground, he jumped, drew the sword of Goliath, and cut off his head. If God has knocked down your Goliath, don't delay, cut off his head. Because Goliath might have been knocked out. But do you know that fresh air could blow on him and he could recover? But even if he recovered, but how could he recover if he said he's gone? Don't waste time. In Genesis chapter 19, from verse 15 to 26, Genesis 19, 15 to 26, when the angels told Lot, get out of this city, because this city is about to be destroyed. The Bible said the Lord lingered. The angels grabbed him by the hand and dragged him out. Don't delay. Don't look back. 
The one who looked back, you know what happened to her. In Numbers chapter 14, from verse 40 to 45, Numbers 14, from verse 40 to 45, you will discover that delaying it till tomorrow might be too late. One of the things my teacher taught me when I was in the primary school is never leave till tomorrow what you can do today. Never leave till tomorrow what you can do today. Don't ever say there's no need to hurry. Time is not waiting for you. Time is hurrying away. Since I started preaching, talking to you now, almost 14 minutes had already passed. 14 minutes that can never be regained. Never delay. Always be in a hurry. Don't ever waste an opportunity. Learn to grab every opportunity you have. For example, in 2 Kings chapter 13, from verse 14 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 13, from verse 14 to 19. You know the story. Elisha was about to die. A king came to him and said, oh, my father, my father, what am I going to do now? You are the one who has been defending this nation. Now you are about to go. And Elisha said, no problem. I can set through the future for you. You know the story. He told him to shoot his shot and said, that's victory for you. Then he told him, take your arrow, smite the ground. And the, the king smote the ground three times and stopped. And the man of God said, ah, who asked you to stop? You should have smitten at least five times, then your victory would have been total. He said, but you smote the ground three times, now you have three victories. What I found most embarrassing about that story in the Bible was that the king had that. At the time the king had that, Elisha was still living. He could have said, sorry, sir. Hey, five times. Uh, and we smite the ground 20 times. But, but this king allowed the opportunity to slip out of his hand. Child of God, pay close attention to the message of today. There are certain opportunities that once they are lost, they are lost forever. Listening to me today, for example, is an opportunity. Make the most of it. Study as much as you can. Change your attitude to time. Time and tide wait for nobody. Today, you are already a day older than you were yesterday. And yesterday is gone. No matter your anointing, you can bring back the year 2022. It's gone. Make the most of every opportunity. The, the, there is a saying that says, you must hit the iron, strike the iron while it is hot. This is very, very, very important. 
This is why every Christian who comes late to service must wake up. Oh, all they are doing is they're just uh, singing choruses. Uh, there are blessings that accompany every minute. And once you miss your own, it's gone. You say, what are the practical implications of all this lesson? Number one. The Bible may declare that by his stripes you were healed. Don't stay sick. John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 14. John 5, 2 to 14. The Bible tells us that a man had been sick for 38 years. Jesus came on the scene and healed him. He did not wait with the sick. He got up and went to the house of God to go and rejoice. If you believe that God has healed you, act as if you have been healed. Several years ago, when I was still in a lorry, I couldn't go to church because I had a very terrible fever. And so I decided to play a tape while on my bed. And I heard a man of God, Shambak by name, preaching on healing. And he was saying, more than 2,000 years ago, you had been healed. Do you believe the word of God? And I was wondering, how did this man know that I was lying sick of fever? And he said, if you believe the word of God, you will not be lying down in sickness. I jumped up and drove straight to church. I got to church. Somebody else was already preaching because I couldn't come. And as I was sitting down, a all over my body, the man of God suddenly said, Today, one of the ways you will choose to show that you believe God for every miracle is that you will stand up and dance. I struggled to get up, held the pew in front of me, and I began to move just a little bit to the right and to the left and my body was aching. But all of a sudden, I felt like going to the toilet. I went into the toilet. By the time I came out of the toilet, all pain had disappeared. Are you listening to me? Do you believe that Jesus had healed you? Get up. Demonstrate your healing. If he has healed you, don't stay sick. When you have been delivered, demonstrate that you have been delivered. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 20, Mark 5, 2 to 20, when the madman of Gadara got his deliverance, he didn't wait till the following week. He got on with his destiny. He became what God planned for him to be immediately. Do you believe that the Almighty God has set you free? 
They set you free for a purpose. Demonstrate your freedom. Continue with your destiny. Begin to testify. Begin to preach about the one who set you free. There's a destiny waiting out for you there. Don't receive his deliverance in vain. When he pulls down the wall, it is so that you can go ahead and take the territory of the enemy. If you believe that by now, as a child of the Most High God, you are more than a conqueror, demonstrate it. You've heard my testimony. I ran away from my village in 1960 when some occultists told my father to his face that I would be dead before the following morning. I ran. And I kept running for 13 years. And then I met the Lord Jesus Christ. And as soon as I met the Lord Jesus Christ, I learned that now I'm more than a conqueror because of the one who loved me. I learned that because I am now a child of God, no weapon fashioned against me will prosper. And I believed every word of it. Amazingly, in less than one month after I became born again, I got an invitation from my village after all these years telling me a high school had been opened and they want me to come and be the chairman of the board of governors. I jumped at it. I went home and told my mom, I've been invited. I'm going back to if I were. My mom said, no, 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 you are not going. You wait till you have buried me, and then you can go. They are waiting for you to eat you up. <laughs> I laughed. I said, I'm a different person now. I have found Jesus Christ. Nobody, and absolutely nobody, can harm me anymore. After a lot of argument, I said, all right. If I go and I don't return, then... Don't let anybody call the name of Jesus anywhere near you again. But if I go and I return, everybody in this family must surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. I went. I came. I'm still alive. One of the reasons I thank God that today you can hardly find any Adeboye who is not a child of God. If you have been saved, if you have been set free by the truth, demonstrate it. And don't leave it till tomorrow. Begin to act like you are more than a conqueror. When the prison doors are opened unto you, don't wait inside the prison. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 5 to 17, Acts 12, 5 to 17, when Peter was set free in prison and the prison doors opened, he didn't stay in the prison. He got out and sought out his brethren. Do you believe that the Almighty God has destroyed your yokes? Do you believe that he has opened the prison doors unto you from this very moment? Get up. Get out of prison. Move as someone who the Almighty God has set free and do it immediately. Are you born again? Do you believe in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17? 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. 
That if a man be in Christ is a new creature, that all things are passed away, all things have become new. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Do you believe all things are new then? Then why are you still behaving as if you are still the same old person? Don't you know that if all things are new, your language will be new? That your actions will be new? That even your mode of dressing will be new? How can you be a true child of God and your friends won't notice? All things become new. All things, all things. And so if you have been born again and you are still living as if as you were living before, something is wrong somewhere. Wake up today. The wall is down now. Get up. Move forward. Demonstrate your freedom. And the Almighty God will continue to show you that the one who pulled down the wall is ready to give you the city. Finally, if you have received power, if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, don't stay with speaking in tongues. Use the power that you have received to witness and to heal the sick. After Peter received the power in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 41, Acts 2 from verse 1 to 41, the very day he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he not only spoke in tongues, he preached a sermon that won 3,000 souls. How long ago have you been speaking in tongues? How many souls have you brought into the kingdom? Wake up today. The wall is down. March forward. Take the city. And for those of you who have not been born again, how long do you want to stay in darkness? You are hearing the gospel today loud and clear. Your life can become brand new. But you have to choose. Don't delay your salvation. The Almighty God is waiting for you now. His word is clear. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, and you want everything to become new for you, Please bow your heads wherever you are and call on the Almighty God and say, I come today, this very day, Lord, save my soul and give me a brand new beginning. And I will pray for you in a moment. He will forgive your sins and all things will become new for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, I want to thank you for your word today. I want to thank you because for many of us, the walls are down now. And I want to thank you especially for those people who are saying, I'm not waiting anymore. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. And give them a brand new beginning, Lord. Receive them into the family of God. And from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. And let them serve you till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm rejoicing with those of you who have taken this instant decision to surrender your life to Jesus. Do you know, seconds ago, you become a child of God. And all things are different now. Your name has been written in the book of life in heaven. And things will never be the same again. So I'm advising you, please locate the nearest redeemed Christian church of God to you today. 
and tell the pastor that I sent you. He will tell you what to do next. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. We thank God for another time out in his presence. We bless the name of the Lord for the meal that we have eaten again at his table today. One of the major things that our daddy taught us today is that we should not allow any opportunity to slip us by. So we want to give our offering now. And I think it's another opportunity to be blessed. I want you to bring out a quality offering for him. As um, I quickly read from the book of um, Philippians chapter 4 from verse 15 to 17. Know if, now, ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. I want to encourage us today that we give bountifully. Because whatever we are giving is going to be to our account. Like I said, it's another time to be blessed. Another opportunity Seize this opportunity. Don't let it slip by you. And make sure that you give bountifully. The Lord will bless us as we give in Jesus' name. As we listen to the choristers. And um, I want to say that if you are going to give online, you will see the uh, details of our accounts so, uh, displayed on the screen. And um, if you are going to write a check, write RCCG Camp Project. And the Lord will bless you bountifully in Jesus' name. Shall we bow down to pray? Father in heaven, we want to thank you this day. We thank you, O God, for another opportunity to bless us. Because whenever we give, your word says we will be blessed. That's what you said in the book of Malachi chapter 3. That when we bring in our tithes and offering into your house, you will open the windows of heaven to bless us. Father, please, Lord, let this word be made manifest in our lives today. Bless us indeed, almighty God, and let us always have to give unto you in Jesus' name. As many that do not have to give today and desire to do so, Father, I pray that, Lord, you will please provide for their needs according to your word, almighty Father, that, Lord, by the time we are going to have the opportunity to give again, you will surely give them the grace to be able to give. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy name. In your kingdom, when we are going to receive the reward of all these things that we do here on earth, please don't let any one of us be found wanting. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. The choir. <laughs> Hey! 
begin to appreciate the almighty God. Let us bless his holy name for mighty things he has done in our midst today, for the deep things he has revealed to us, for the revelational knowledge of the world. Give him praise. Thank him because the world has already fallen and we can go ahead and possess our possession. We can take over the city. We can take over the land. Praise God for it. Appreciate him for it. Ask him to give us the power and resources to seize this opportunity of this time so that we will not lose it. Go ahead and talk to God. Talk to him. He's here in our midst. And he will perform that which he has spoken in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's bring our prayer to a close now as we pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we cannot thank you enough for what you are doing for us, for the deep things you are revealing to us, for making a way for us to get out of the tight corner the enemy tend to put us. Thank you that the wall of Jericho has fallen. Thank you because we can now go and possess the land. May your name be prayed forever in Jesus' name. Thank you for the heaven that is already opened unto us and the grace to make use, to take advantage of this heaven open. Please release to us in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of procrastination, every spirit of laziness that will not allow us to take advantage of this season, remove from our life completely in the name of Jesus. Father Almighty, we pray that the resources, both spiritual, physical, and material, to possess our possession, to take over the land for you. You will release to us in the name of Jesus. We will move forward than ever before in the name of Jesus. We will achieve greatness more than ever before for the sake of the kingdom and advancement of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your son, my beloved daddy, our father in the Lord, that you have used for us. Increase his strength in Jesus' name. Increase his grace in Jesus' name. Increase his anointing in Jesus' name. This well of inspiration, let him continue to flow like never before in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen.